Two random things about me. I'm afraid of dogs, number one. <laughs> yes, I am. So if you have a dog, you can pick up a gate. Mume fungia. Um, second thing is, oh, it's weird, I'm a bookworm. Hi everyone, my name is Lucy Vache Oyer. I am a sinner who has been saved by God's grace. <laughs> I am also a wife to a very extraordinary gentleman. <laughs> My husband and I have the privilege of raising three very handsome boys and we don't take that lightly, we don't take it for granted. Uh, apart from my faith and being a wife and a mother, I am also an actress, a director and a poet who loves dancing and singing. No pressure, eh? Um, <clears throat> I love Chapo. <laughs> Beans and avocado in that order. Together. Um, yeah, together is it. That's the best meal ever. Um, I, I love dancing. People don't love it when I dance though, because it's donated. But I still do it. Um, and I think I, I'm the first guy who was a male baby fever. I see kids and I'm like, oh. And I have four of those. And then, yeah. But every parent has told me you get the first one and then you talk. So, yeah. In brief, what inspired you guys to be like, we're going to follow this path, even though when you're starting and seeing it wasn't like the in thing. Uh, definitely, acting was not the in thing. Uh, script writing, you, you actually started like six years ago, I think. Yes. So, what inspired you to be like, yes, we done this in school or I have a job but then I want to do this full time. Uh, so when I, I started my journey I was uh, working down the university way which I summarized. Then Ajuma, the supermodel, uh, she saw me, she's like, hey, you look good in, a, in an advertisement. Would you want to come and audition? You know, obviously, handsome mess itself and like, duh, of course I look good in that. So um, yeah. So I went, I failed uh, severally. <laughs> I didn't get any of those auditions. So guys in class, I used to they about them, let's go audition in Hanningham. They're like, we're not getting this gig. So eventually I was alone. Then I got one. Got a safari bomb gig, then a crown paint one. The one on Afukuzwa and Ostri. The one on Afukuzwa and Ostri, that's, uh, that's the one. Thank you for the reminder, bro. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, while there, um, I took a year of school. I was like, hey, chemistry, I'm going to go to the It's a bit hard. I don't even want to be in a lab for the rest of my life. So I was like, oh, let, me, let me try writing, because I've always um, written ever since I was a kid. While on the set of this advertisement, somebody was like, you know, we need a writer for something we want to pitch to KTN. And I helped out, and they liked it, they took it, and yeah, been writing ever since. I was introduced into poetry at the age of nine, and it was an attempt at a poetry recital, you know, during music festivals, and that took me to the nationals. So from the age of nine till through primary school, through high school, I, that's something I was very passionate about. So just performing arts, from poetry to acting to dancing. However, it's always been the thing that I used to do as part-time, as a hobby. So after uni, I got a job uh, with one of the MNCs. I was in the corporate for like 13 years. Um, but during that time, I used to still act and do my poetry on the side. But three years ago, when I was pregnant with our last born, um, I sort of took a golden handshake. The, the, I was working for an American uh, firm. It wasn't doing so well, so I took a golden handshake, I'm calling it that in quotes, knowing fully well that, you know, I will nurse the pregnancy, then after that deliver, and then get back into the corporate. It, that was clear. But then after my extended maternity leave, I started taking up uh, acting gigs again.
again. And then something at the back of my mind told me, when even I was leaving, that your life would never be the same after this. And there was some, Maybe. it was at the back of my mind. And so after delivery, I was like, okay, I need to apply for jobs and get back into the corporate. But then something kept telling me, Apana, that's not the path. I, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. So I started auditioning for, for, for acting jobs and, and for some reason, it was just project after project after project. Like God had somehow aligned it. And uh, I went to my husband. I know this would have been a very crazy shift because we are moving from uh, a high rolling corporate mama to nothing. Because I knew that I would, would have to start with nothing, you know? Like I didn't know, I, didn't, I knew that the arts would not pay half of what I was getting in the corporate for sure. Because I'd risen up the ladder and I knew there's not in the near future am I going to hit that mark. Anyway, so I had this chat with my husband and me, I had overwhelming peace. The people around me were panicking, like, how, how, how are you going to do? This is like uh, uh, um, career suicide and all that. So everyone else was wondering how I'm making that goal move. But I prayed about it and I also consulted my husband about it. My husband was not opposed to it, but he was also hesitant, you could tell. Uh, but over time, uh, he's been the most supportive uh, partner anyone could ever ask for. Like, even for me, I knew would have to make major adjustments, like from driving to taking a job to... But for me, it wasn't, it was a, a price I was willing to pay. I, I always believe if I am to be comfortable driving a big car, I should be very comfortable driving a small one, very comfortable riding a border border, or even walking. So that, I've never been, I had any qualms about it. But lifestyle-wise, we had to make many adjustments. Something I don't regret because I'm very, very fulfilled in my job and able to uh, give some time to my children as well. How many are expecting an inspiring story? <laughs> now, remove all those expectations. Because <laughs> mine was purely my accident. Flashback. High school, this was my goal in high school. And I told my father that once, he almost smacked me. Um, high school, I played basketball in high school. I was a breaker. Um, so this was, was my plan. After high school, I'd get a scholarship, join a campus in the States, I'd become a rapper, I'd be short, and die. That was my life plan. Pure, that was my life plan. Uh, but then, um, <laughs> West Coast. Yeah, that's West Coast. West Coast. But um, I finished high school. Uh, the plan went quarter way. So I joined a team. Uh, I was playing for Nairobi University uh, in the league. Then in my second game, the second game, I bust my left knee. And I couldn't play anymore. So I was in a cast, so every time I walked in the house, my father would go like <laughs> He wouldn't say a thing. He just go, he told me, uh, now you've passed it. Eh? And God's plans were not for you to play basketball. What will you do? He gave me like a list. My father is a military man, so he gave me a list of courses. And he told me, now you've refused to listen to me for like all your life. Now listen. Because you don't have one knee. Listen. <laughs> so, this is the list of courses. What do you want to do? I figured I love reading. I hear people read for long. So let's go. And I loved it. I loved the whole journey from undergrad to Kenya School of Law. And even now, you'll find me sometimes in our office around State House Road. I'm reading cases. You know, there's a client who's coming, we have to do. Uh, some creative work for them, but I'm there reading, hey, what does this, uh, this judge say or this other one? Because I love it, I really love it. So MC came about, um, I started off as a backup dancer for, after my knee healed, I was like, what's the next thing that will give me adrenaline? Because I can't be jumping over hopes and everything. So I landed at uh, Sitam Valley Road and joined a dance group and we were dancing for Chris Aero as backup dancers. Then we danced for Alemba. Then this one time, we are at uh, Desta University. The MC is late, and the hype man is late. 
So guys from my crew, teams and teams are like, we, so you know, na kelele practice. Ingia hapo. And that remains to be my best show yet. Like, every, every, most of the MCs will tell you, when they go to Desta, it's usually audition. Because we tell them, welcome Kono Ju, like, oh, wow, Kono Ju. They don't respond. Wow. <laughs> And here is a novice, like he's fresh. I've just been told, oh, pick a kelele practice, 20. And from then on, I was like, let me pursue this. I have fulfilled one rapping career. I've always wanted to tell my kids, unaona nikiwa mudogo nilikuwa na imba. Just so I did a rap song, and yeah, here we are. <laughs> so that's how I'm here. So you, you've seen the legal journey and the MC journey, so combine them. The only MC with an LLB. <laughs> screen to watch more videos like this one and to subscribe to this channel don't forget to click the notification button down below see you next time